Hi everybody, I've got something very exciting on the bench for tearing down today. It's an 1176 compressor. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's the most famous compressor of all time. Uh, it's a FET compressor, uh, so we're gonna get into what that means and what makes it so distinctive. But uh, first from the outside, we've got uh, input, control, which is what the 1176 used instead of a threshold, was it has a fixed threshold, more on that later, uh, and then you controlled how much gain was going into that threshold. An output control, which is our makeup pad or trim, uh, attack release, ratio, your meter, and then uh, meter in on and off. Uh, but let's get inside and see what's going on under the hood. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. So, power comes in here. Uh, AC from the wall into this big power transformer here. Then out to this board uh, for the power switch. And then over to the main board here. Uh, what else we got going on in the power section? Ooh, look at this guy. Okay, so this, you will not find this part in, uh, in many modern designs. In fact, I don't even believe that they used this part after the Rev D of the 1176. Um, it is called a shunt diode? No, 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 a stud diode. Uh, it's basically a Zener diode that regulates the, um, the voltage down to our 30 volts, which is our main power rail for everything in here. Um, and then we have another Zener here, a much smaller one, uh, and that just gives us our negative 10 DC, which is going to be our reference voltage for the gain reduction section. And then some big caps here um, for reservoir. Those provide current when, when the circuit needs it quickly. It also does filtering to filter out noise from the power supply. Um, so that's about it for the power supply. Now I'm going to scooch over to show you the audio section and a block diagram. First thing that the audio signal will see is the input attenuator. Um, this is the input knob. It's basically before anything else, uh, you can turn down or up the, uh, the input level before it goes to the balanced input, which is this transformer. This is a mu metal transformer. It would have been made by UTC back in the day. Uh, and it does a bit of a step down to get us to the gain control FET. So, not a whole lot of preamble before we get to the main event, which is this single transistor here, which is what does all of the gain control in the entire compressor. That's why it's called a FET compressor. We're going to go really deep on this in a moment, but for the moment we're going to move on to the signal preamp, which is this stage right here. It's class A, discrete, um, very critical to the sound of the unit because it's providing 26 dB of gain. Uh, so that's plenty of gain for those transistors to show their nonlinearities and, and uh, impart some color. And then we feed the output pot, which is this passive attenuator here. Oops, nope, this one. <laughs> and that's basically just our uh, make up gain, except it's actually just a passive pot before we go to the signal line amp, which is right here. Another discrete class A stage. Both of these are very similar, uh, if not identical, to the 1108 uh, mic preamp from Yuri. And then the balanced output, which is this big transformer here would have been made by Reichenbach, which became Cinemag, who we all know and love. Um, but I, you know, if you go straight through here, you miss something very important, which is this little thing feeding back here. Uh, this is the side chain. This is what they call on the circuit board here, the gain reduction control amp. And this is where the uh, control voltage for the FET is created and manipulated. And so all the rest of the controls, attack, release, ratio, all that are contained within the side chain here. Um, and I want you to note something really interesting. The side chain gets tapped at the same point uh, as the output pot from the signal preamp. It's not before the FET, it's after the FET. So this is what's called a feedback style compressor, meaning the side chain actually at the same time is telling the FET what to do and also seeing what the FET does and then working that into what it tells the FET to do. Uh, it can kind of break your brain uh, if you're not used to thinking about feedback 
in electronic circuits, but it's a big part of the sound of the unit. Uh, feed forward and feedback compressors can sound very, very different. Um, so that is a basic uh, kind of block diagram of the circuit. Let's go deep now on the gain control FET. So the FET in the FET compressor just makes up one leg of a voltage divider. So let me explain explain first what a voltage divider is, and then we'll get to how the FET works in that context. So a voltage divider is just two resistors or two resistive elements uh, in such a configuration that they reduce the voltage at this node between them by a certain amount. So input here is one volt. Uh, let's say these are the same value. Your output here is going to be half a volt. I'm not going to get into the formula for it, um, but Basically, what you need to understand is that a voltage divider can divide the voltage. It can reduce the voltage. Um, and so we can do cool things with that, like volume controls, like uh, this second one down here, where R2 is a variable resistor. That's what this symbol means here. It's a rheostat, or a variable resistor. And so if you vary R2, now you have a volume control. That's all that's happening in the FET compressor is the FET is replacing R2. And a FET is a transistor, it's an active device. And one of the cool ways you can use it is that you can use one of the pins to control the resistance between the other two. So the three pins of a FET are the gate, drain, and source. And the resistance between drain and source typically is very, very high. With with no voltage here, it's we can assume this is infinite. And in a voltage divider, if R2 is infinite, there's no voltage reduction. There's no gain reduction. But if you apply DC voltage to the gate, you can gradually lower this resistance, which will gradually lower the voltage here. Uh, so it's basically just like our volume knob here, but instead of having a knob, we have a DC control voltage. And where does that DC come from? Well, I gave it away, from sidechain. So basically the way this works is that the sidechain takes a peek at the audio somewhere here after the, uh, the preamp section, manipulates it a bit, uh, you know, sets the ratio, uh, converts it to DC, and then sets the um, attack and release, and then sends it back here as a control voltage for the FET, telling it basically, oh, okay, the voltage level, uh, sorry, the signal level's here, you need to be at this resistance. Oh, now it's down here, okay, the resistance can go up for less gain reduction. And that's it. I mean, it's really, um, in principle, a very simple thing. Um, and you, you would think, you know, if, if all these components were ideal, extremely linear. Uh, but, of course, these, all these components are not ideal, thank God. The FET has some very cool nonlinear properties which give this thing its compression character, uh, by and large. So one is that it's not linear with regard to the control voltage. Uh, that is to say, this resistance here doesn't change as a linear relationship to the voltage here. It's much, it's closer to exponential. So you can't reliably tell it exactly how much to reduce the signal at any time. It's going to depend on the, uh, the what we would call the, v, the RDS curve, uh, the curve of the resistance here. It's also not linear with regard to frequency. It's going to dump different frequencies at different rates. Um, so cool things that just happen from the limitations of, uh, of existing real parts. And, you know, isn't that just what analog electronics is all about? Um, so that's the, the gain reduction. Next, I want to show you what's going on with the, the ratio, because it's, it's pretty wild. So let me give you a quick uh, orientation. This is all the audio circuitry input, output uh, that we've been through already. This is the power. And then all this is the sidechain. So you can see right away that the sidechain is a major part of the circuit. Um, the sidechain comes off of the audio here and comes back to the FET here. This is our gain control FET right there. Um, so the ratio on the 1176 is much more interesting and complex than I had originally thought. Um, those numbers on the front, 
4, 8, 12, 20, they don't mean much. I hate to break it to you. They don't, they don't mean what you think they mean. Um, in fact, the ratio control, which are these switches here, aren't really a ratio control at all. Uh, it turns out you can't really control the ratio of uh, this kind of compression. Uh, you can only control the threshold. So another myth busted. Uh, not only does the 1176 have a threshold control, uh, we call it ratio. Uh, so let me just quickly go over how this works without getting... I'll try to stay out of the weeds. Um, basically, you can't send instructions in a logarithmic way to a FET, uh, at least with this technology here. And we hear things in a logarithmic way in terms of volume, meaning um, something that's two volts isn't twice as loud to our ears as one volt. It's 6 dB louder. Every time you double the air pressure or the voltage, it goes up 6 dB, which is not doubling in loudness to us. Um, so what implications does that have here? Well, let's imagine you're the FET, and you know nothing about humans or the way that they hear audio, and neither does anything else in the sidechain. And you have a voltage coming in at uh, one volt. So we've got uh, blah, 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 you know, we're in the verse, we're at one volt. Uh, it's a very steady thing, you know, let's say it's a, a super compressed bass. Um, and then let's say, pretend for now our threshold is also one volt. So here's our threshold, one volt, our audio is also around there. So it's just kind of getting tickled by the compression here. Now the chorus hits, and we're up to two volts. And so a certain amount of compression is happening here based on the, the ratio switch, which is really a threshold. Okay, and then we go up, well, let's say it's a big bridge, we go up 6 dB again, that actually goes up to four volts. So to what our ears was just 6 dB is now way over the threshold for the FET. And it just keeps getting worse and worse until, you know, when you get to 20 dB, that's actually a 100 times bigger voltage. And the poor little FET doesn't know that that's just 20 dB to our ears. It's getting 100 times more of the DC control voltage than it was uh, down here when it was 6 dB above. So the ratio is actually dependent on the input signal. And so you can't determine with these switches a single ratio. You, um, it's just not something you could do with this technology. And again, it's kind of like, thank God, because it sounds awesome. Um, and so what the ratio is really doing is this kind of delicate... Um, dance where it's adjusting the amount of DC bias sent. Uh, basically, it's controlling the AC threshold, which is the amount of signal going into the side chain, and also the DC threshold, which is kind of where these rectifier diodes will start sending DC to the transistor. But uh, yeah, so in brief, and this is really a theme with analog audio, especially older things, is it's like it's they they knew what they wanted to do they had a very limited set of tools and so they did something that kind of worked like that and they put it in studios and people were like wow this sounds awesome yeah is it really four to one i don't care <laughs> it makes the snare sound amazing uh so that's that's what's really going on with the ratio another kind of fun thing I just want to point out is if you're familiar with the all buttons in mode, that's where you push in all four of these ratio switches at the same time. I know this looks like eight switches here if you're following along closely, but they're actually just four double pull switches. So um, that's what this connector line here means. But so if you push all four in, you get a ton of compression. The meter goes crazy. It's a kind of signature trick of the 1176. Um, what I realized looking at the schematic is what happens when you're in all buttons in mode is that all these switches are bypassing these resistors here, basically. They're in by default, and then the each switch bypasses a different resistor. If you just put in the first switch and the fourth switch, you can bypass all those resistors. And same over here. You put in the first switch and the fourth switch. Um, so you don't actually need to uh, put all buttons in to get all buttons in mode. You can just put in the first and the fourth switch. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the ratio there. 
So there you have it. I hope you found that little jaunt through the 1176 uh, useful. As you can see, it's a very interesting circuit with a lot of pretty wild stuff going on, which makes sense. It's a, it's a funky sounding thing. I want to shout out to Hairball Audio for lending me this beautiful piece of gear to tear down, uh, and also some people on forums who really helped me with this kind of deeper understanding, SSL Tech, Monty McGuire, and of course Mike from Hairball himself. Um, so thanks so much, and uh, yeah, drop, drop a line in the comments, let me know what you'd like to see me tear down next.